Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how it's possible to use your smartphone as a 3D scanner to give you complete 3D images of yourself or objects. Did you know if you have an iPhone 10 or later that your phone actually has lasers in it and it shines out lasers at you to do facial recognition? And actually if you have an iPhone 12 or later, it actually has little lasers that shine out of the back of your phone as well. So in order to do facial recognition on your phone, you can't just use a traditional camera because it has to be able to tell the contours of your face to recognize if it's actually your face. So what facial recognition does is it actually sends out a grid of laser light. Now this laser light you can't see because it's infrared lasers, but you can still see these if you just have a security camera that uses night vision. So I'm just gonna be using one of the cameras in my house that has night vision, which means it can see infrared light. And you can actually see these grids of laser lights coming out of the phone. So for example, I'm standing here, you're seeing me through infrared light. It's actually dark in the room and looks more like this. So you can see the screen of my phone here on the regular camera, I'm still here, but it's too dark to see. But on infrared, you can see it just fine. But here's the crazy thing. Watch what happens when I turn on my phone and look at it through re facial recognition. Here's what it looks like with regular light. So you don't notice anything. But here's what it looks like through an infrared camera. Turn it on. <laughs> So you can see that it looks like a flashlight here that I'm aiming at the camera. But what's cool about this is notice the pattern that it's shining on me. It's not just straight light, but it's actually little dots. When I shine it on the wall back there. And what it does is it shines those laser dots on the user's face and then it estimates the shape based on how those dots are deformed in the array. Now this is really cool technology and what it means is that you can actually use facial recognition to scan other 3D objects. And there's different apps that do this. For example, here I'm using an app called Scandy Pro where I've scanned my son's stuffed animal. Or you can just scan your face. For example, here's my face. So just in a few seconds, I can get a complete 3D image of my face. You can even export this as an STL file and 3D print your face if you want to. Now the color is added through the camera. If you don't use color, it would look something like this. But what's even cooler is with the new iPhone 12, they added something that was seemingly untouchable to regular people, LiDAR. LiDAR works by sending out lasers and seeing how long it takes for the laser light to be reflected back. And so based on how long it takes the reflection to return, you can tell how far away something is because we know that the speed of light is constant. And if you repeat this process with a 2D grid of lasers, that means you can get a three-dimensional pattern or a point cloud, they call it, of all the different points in space of any object or room that you're in. So you just shine it around your room and you end up with a 3D image of the room like this. So cool. My favorite thing to do is use this in a room with a mirror and in your 3D image, it looks like that mirror is actually a portal to another room. So here's what would be the reflection, but you can see it actually looks like another room over there. Now on the back of your phone, if you're using LiDAR, the array is not as fine. There's not as many dots but they can reach further distances. So you can see here's the array, they're a lot brighter. They're not as close together though, so the resolution isn't as good. But what's really cool about this is in a completely dark room, you can scan it using infrared light, so your phone is seeing what's in a completely dark room. So you can see the contours of the room that would normally be pitch black to it, but because it's using these infrared uh, laser dots, it can see the contours of the room. So it's almost like I have this infrared camera here. Can look around the room. So the lasers on the front of your phone don't use LiDAR, but they're actually looking at the different shapes of the dots and how they 
deform in the array when you shine it on something that's three-dimensional. But on the back of your phone, they actually use LiDAR technology, which is sensing how long it takes the light to reflect back to it. So because of this, the one on the front of your phone is more sensitive and can get down to as little as one millimeter resolution. Whereas on the back of your phone, it's meant for like big rooms and stuff. And iPhones even use it to quickly be able to focus the picture faster than just visual cues could do when you're trying to take a picture of something. And so no matter how much light there is in the room, even in low light, the LiDAR still works. And so you can focus the image really well in low light. It used to be that this LiDAR technology was super expensive and it took tens of thousands of dollars to purchase just one piece of equipment that used one laser spinning in a circle. Now, when you hear that your phone has lasers on it, that should bring up a few key questions. I guess the first question would be, how does it not hurt your eyes to shine an infrared laser at yourself? Well, the wavelength of laser light that the phone uses is 1550 nanometers. Well, the nice thing about this 1550 nanometer range is that first it's invisible to the human eye, so it's not gonna bother you, you're not gonna see these laser lights flying out of your phone. And second is the human eye is actually opaque to 1550 nanometers. So that means that these laser lights aren't going to damage your eye either. The other thing that should be amazing to you that there's lasers shining out of your phone is that how can there be so many laser lights shining out of your phone when you've seen a laser before and typically they're pretty big. For example, here's one red laser pointer. You can see how big this is and you can get these lasers pretty small depending on the different technology. But to have 30,000 lasers shining out of your phone, you need to do something different here. So what the iPhone does on the front of your phone is right on the front, there's an array of vertical cavity surface emitting lasers, abbreviated VCSEL, or pronounced VIXEL. Now in order to make a laser, you have to have a source of light that you bounce back and forth across mirrors. And because photons actually prefer to be in the same state as neighboring photons, if you bounce them back and forth a lot together, they'll eventually enter the same phase. So you can phase the photons together and it comes out as laser light. But how do you get 30,000 layers to show up on a tiny little sensor on your screen on an iPhone? Well, what you do is you can actually use MEMS technology, the same technology in which we build computer chips. And you can make a top layer and a bottom layer, and these will represent your mirrors that bounce the light back and forth. But what you do is you make the top mirrored surface a little bit less reflective than the bottom one, so that after a lot of bounces, eventually the light's going to escape, and that's the circle of light that's gonna come out as the laser and you can have these huge arrays of them and they don't use a lot of power. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.